the like this is important for everyone to include and be aware of during their application and incorporating these HUD homelessness priority um, policy priorities within your application. You'll see a lot of questions that um, include this information. And so to know that when you see this to respond um, in detail because this is what HUD wants to see and we have aligned our application with this. And so um, part of that is using a housing first approach. HUD has clearly made it um, a requirement for um, COC funded programs. And so we included a lot of questions around how your your program is following housing first um, principles. And um, and so um, to make sure that you are aware of that, if you have any questions about what Housing First is, the National Alliance and Homelessness has a lot of really great resources around that. Um, you'll also see a lot of questions around improving system performance in both the renewal and new project applications. And, um, and so we want to um, incorporate a lot of those performance pieces. HUD is wanting to see at least 20% of the points um, are from uh, questions that measure performance. And um, this year um, they have created an even stronger emphasis on partnering with public housing authorities. And, um, and so any applicants that are able to submit um, an application in partnership with a public housing authority, whether it's as a subrecipient or a contractor, or they're using matching dollars to do that, our COC would it would increase the number of points we receive from HUD. They have also emphasized partnering with um, healthcare providers, and that being a formal partnership, whether it's a part of your application as a subrecipient or a contractor, but at minimum having an MOU. Um, we made some updates um, around the addressing racial equity in the application. You'll see that in our resilience and equity checklist tool, um, which is aligned with the HUD priority. And we've also included um, information in that tool or that attachment around um, uh, improving assistance to LGBTQ plus individuals. Similar to last year, we've also included questions around um, involving persons with lived experience in decision making positions and through the project application. Um, this year, which is new and very exciting, HUD has updated the definition of homelessness um, to include um, additional language, specifically stating that people who are fleeing domestic violence, they they are now considering that other dangerous, traumatic, or life-threatening conditions related to violence against the individual or family member, um, which really broadens that definition to increase safety for all people. Um, and they have also added a new process where renewals can uh, do can amend their project budgets to include um, funding for. Uh, to facilitate VAWA emergency transfers. And so this is new. Normally you can't do um, an amendment in eSNAPS, but renewals can. You can either do an expansion to add this budget line item to your project, or you can do a budget amendment and shifting less than 10%. Um, and we are recommending that projects consider adding at least some funding under this budget line item in order to um, easily utilize it. So for um, the options for creating new project, um, new projects under the COC bonus. Um, so we have COC bonus, the DB bonus, expansion and transition grants. Really quickly, I'm going to come back up here. So when we talk about the COC bonus, um, the amount on this chart, um, the 305,000, that is the, the amount that our COC can apply for with COC bonuses. So if we receive a lot of COC bonus applications, we will rank them based on how much we have within that funding amount and include it in tier one and tier two. Anything that exceeds it um, will not be included. Um, 
And then for the DV bonus, um, we get 10% of our P PPRN, which is the um, 415,000. Okay, so when applying for those funds under this EOC bonus, you have the following project types that can be um, submitted. And so that's permanent supportive housing, rapid rehousing, the joint transitional to rapid component, HMIS and coordinated entry. Um, for permanent supportive housing, uh, many of you are probably familiar with it, but we'll just really quickly. Um, so that includes um, having a rent subsidy where the tenant pays no more than 30% of their income. And then it also includes case management services. And the case management um, does not, should not be required, but it should always be available for the tenants. Um, for rapid rehousing, that includes rental assistance, housing, search and placement, and also case management, rapid rehousing programs. Uh, the case management is expected to occur um, at least once a month, and then also to use progressive engagement for tenants to uh, take over their rent portion at least within two years. The joint transitional to rapid is a combination of transitional housing and rapid rehousing um, and so you have to when applying for this project have at least um, twice as much of the transitional housing units in order to ensure that people are accessing permanent housing and then hmis we um, housing solutions is the hmis lead agency and so not like we're the ones who apply for those funding and coordinated entry Really quickly, if people have questions throughout this, please feel free to add them in the chat at any point in time. If we don't get to them today, then we will post them on our website um, along with the PowerPoint slides and the recording. Okay. Um, so then for the domestic violence, um, the DV bonus projects, the eligible project types are rapid rehousing and the joint transitional housing. Um, the bulleted items show like how they're being measured and approved by HUD and so has to follow housing first principles. Um, and they um, need to demonstrate a need in the community for that project type with that subpopulation. Um, and they will be measured on how they utilize victim centered practices and then also including survivors of lived experience. Um, for the supportive services only coordinated entry, it's um, really focused on implementing policy and procedures and practices um, for people who are fleeing um, dangerous situations. For the DV bonus, you can only submit one um, new DV bonus project for SSOCE. Our community has not submitted one, and so that is um, one of those project types that's available. You can apply for as many projects through Rapid Rehousing and the Joint Transitional Housing um, to Rapid. Each project must be at least um, $25,000. So, um, and then for, they're not allowed to be combined with reallocated <coughs> or COC bonus funds. So if you're doing the DV bonus, you're just doing the DV bonus and then the DV bonus projects are, um, if they're not selected for the DV specific funding, they'll be considered and moved over to the general COC bonus funding. Um, for renewal projects mentioned earlier, we talked about um, expansion and including um, considering applying for an expansion um, to include the VAWA budget line item. And so you could use um, uh, the expansion process for that and you would be submitting a renewal project application and a new project application. And so for the local competition, you'll be doing both as well. And then in eSnaps, you would be doing both as well. The grant term is um, of one year um, for an expansion. And that's yeah. 
So for transition projects, we actually did not receive any um, notification from anyone who is interested in a transition project, so I won't go too much into this. If someone changes their mind and is interested, please contact us at Housing Solutions um, at your earliest convenience. It only applies to renewal projects. Um, so for this, this is just important information for renewal projects. Um, so for the DV bonus, apps may include the request to add eligible activities um, or shift up to 10%. Um, and then for renewal projects, they may include a request to add eligible activities to shift up to 10%. Um, you can also um, change your subpopulation. Um, and um, please be mindful of when you're requesting a shift, if you decide to do so, if you request a shift of more than 10%, HUD will correct the project budget and do the previously awarded amount. Um, consolidation. So there are a few renewal projects that um, may be eligible for consolidation, and I encourage any of y'all to to take that into consideration if you are eligible. Um, it's uh, it would make life easier and that you would have fewer projects each year to submit applications for, including submitting APRs and doing all of the issues and conditions. Uh, and so if you need assistance, um, we're more than happy to help with that. I also included the NOFO pages um, that talk a little bit about the consolidation project. In order to do so, though, um, be mindful that the current period of performance and budget period and dates must be must end in 2024 and that the projects are in good standing. Um, this is just to highlight our renewal projects um, and um, to see what is funded currently under the COC program. Uh, we have one transitional housing, one transitional to rapid, four rapid, six PSH, um, one CE, and one HMIS. And through these funds, we serve roughly around 408 units or beds a year. So um, if you, yeah. So um, on the Tulsa, on the Housing Solutions website, you'll see a way home for Tulsa tab at the top, and you'll click on the NOFO, and that page will include all of the important information you'll need for this year's funding competition, including our policies, our NOFO standard of operations. I really encourage you all to read these. Um, this outlines the process for rating and ranking, how that looks at the local level. Um, it, thank you, Karen. Karen included the link in the chat. Um, it also includes what you need to know for submission requirements. So for example, if you are a new project applying, you are required to get all of your application materials in on time. You will not be considered um, for the funding if uh, for any late applications. It also talks about the appeals process and the notification of ranking. On the site there, um, it includes the important dates, but I also just wanted to review them with you all here. Um, these are the, um, the local application deadline is due on the 25th. And then we are asking that renewal projects submit the PDF of their eSNAPS applications just for review um, by the 31st. And then we'll have opportunity to make updates um, as long as we have all of the eSNAPS information in um, by the 20th of September. So, um, Please mark your calendar for these dates so that you're aware of them, especially if it's um, the intent to appeal and the appeal date and read through the standard operating procedures for what that process looks like. Uh, 
Um, once again, you'll see when you go to the NOFO page, um, the competition overview and then application materials and additional resources and documents. And then the key dates is where that timeline is and important dates. Um, if we have to make a change to anything, we will use red font on the website and we will send out an email notification to let you know that something has changed. It could be that we pushed a date or that we noticed something in an application material or we just have updated information. Um, renewal project application materials. Um, so first, um, while you are doing your application, to look through before and throughout your application, the scoring tool, that is how the review team will um, award points to your project, and those points will be used to rank your project competitively. So it's important to know what are they looking for? What is the point structure? Am I meeting all of the required standards for this question and throughout the entire application? Um, this year, we made a few updates to the application. So the RFI application for renewal projects. Um, please carefully review the uh, checklist and I can pull that up if that would be helpful, but um, it has a checklist section and to make sure that you're looking through that very carefully and add those as attachments in your application. Um, the also the NOFO resilience and equity checklist has been updated. It um, has more um, both the close ended piece, but also a lot of open ended prompts to um, requesting for narrative sections and also to be mindful of the scoring tool because it's asking for more data this year. Um, and so to like carefully read through that and the instructions in the checklist document. Um, Presto, I'm still learning Presto, um, but uh, so I don't know if I could answer any of your questions. Um, Karen is on this call and um, today and is the Presto um, expert. And so um, please feel free to type any questions in there if you have them. Yeah, or like you can ask questions to like, um, we want to make sure that um, you know, we're getting that piece done as soon as possible. And then also in the actual application at the very end, there's a question that asks for you all to provide a response to your data that was submitted in Presto. It's um, if you have any comments, be detailed as much as possible. The review team will be looking at that item in the application and will be using that to make any adjustments to your scores if needed. So I believe it's the very last question. Any questions for Karen? And we can wait until after as well. OK. Feel free to put any questions in the chat, um, whether it's Presto related or not. Um, OK, so a reminder um, for everyone who is eligible to apply. So um, those are listed there and they and every applicant must have an active SAMS account and then the UEI. You also must have an updated code of conduct on file with HUD. While we were doing the YHGP, the Youth Homelessness Demonstration Project, we realized that that was a little bit confusing for people. Um, especially newer applicants. And so um, to make sure that you have that, there's a link in this PowerPoint slide where you can check HUD's website to make sure that you have one on file. If you don't, there's also instructions on that from that link that shows you how to complete that. Um, more information is in the NOFO and I've outlined those um, page numbers. I also want um, so HUD is really emphasizing increasing you know, partnerships and to remind everyone that if you have a subrecipient, the same um, requirements for eligible organizations um, are like apply. 
Um, so on the website, there are links to the new project application materials. And um, once again, the scoring tool is an important um, document that you will want to review very closely. It's how um, it outlines how many points you will receive for your response and for each item. And then um, so for new projects, you have several different documents that you may have to submit if you don't have them. So for example, the RFI application is required for all of the applicants. The service standard self-assessment, if you have not submitted that in the past, then you will need to submit that. And then all um, new project applicants will have to submit as an attachment the project budget template. There's instructions that go along with it. And then also the COC NOFO resilience and equity checklist. Really quickly, let me pull up. I'm going to do an exam. I'm going to show an example of what the scoring tool looks like. OK, so this is the renewal scoring tool. So there's a new project and a renewal, and it outlines um, the total point structure and th threshold requirements, which for renewals, um, you have most likely already <laughs> met those and still do. Um, for the, so it'll tell you exactly like what points you receive. Um, these are ones that are scored in Presto. And so based on the information that Karen sent back to you all on your Presto numbers, if there's something that um, isn't resolved, then to make sure that you're putting that information in that last question in the application materials. So um, this year we have outlined um, like the point structure so you can quickly see it through the renewal application. And the total points is 106. And then this is um, to show how that we met requirements that they want us to meet. Um, when you on one of the links, um, this uh, page is really helpful. It um, will take you over to like eSnaps or frequently asked questions. So you can always ask a question to HUD by clicking on this. Um, and then also you can access eSnaps navigation and application material resources. This year we're not requiring applicants to submit their eSnaps application in advance. We're waiting until later um, because we're under such a tight timeline. And then um, to review others, you can go to the grants.gov page to see more information about the NOFO. And so you can actually click on here to access the NOFO and read through it, which I recommend. Um, and then I do the budget template. Oh, I already have it open. OK, so this is the budget template for new projects. Um, what you will do is you will enter in whatever amounts you're requesting for, and then here you want to be very specific. So bus fare is probably not specific enough in your narrative. So you would want to say something like bus fare at 125 per person times 120 people equals this much amount. And you'll want to do that for each item to be specific. For new projects who are also submitting this budget, you um, will need to look at the FMR um, and add it on here for one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom. We actually have that link in the budget instructions to make it easy to access. And so it'll come out and this will match what you're entering into eSnaps um, as well. And then we added this budget um, the VAWA budget line item broken out into the new eligible costs. So if you're including that as a new project, 
you would enter that information in here. And then instead of having it on on this, because I would have had to redo all of the formulas, um, we're asking that you put that total right here and it should match this tab right here. So VAWA BLI, you would just put the total amount that you're requesting once you fill out this detailed on here. Um, just as a quick FYI, if anybody wants to use this, you can always add this, like add in 12 months here and then use this as the, as a template for your budget to actuals to track on a monthly basis. Um, let's see, and then. Go back over here. OK, so you'll see all of the required documents. So the self standard is for new projects who haven't submitted that document before budget instructions, and then all applicants are submitting this NOFO resilience and equity checklist as well. See if we can pull that up really quick. OK, so um, make sure to pay attention to the instructions. The instructions have changed um, and um, to also look at the project scoring tool. And then um, if you are submitting this for multiple projects, um, for example, renewal, um, there's several agencies that have several projects just to list them in the project type here. So we know which ones that you're referring to that are COC funded. And then um, you'll check yes, no, unsure, and then you'll put a narrative here and a narrative here as well. So that's a little bit different from last year. Um, and um, yeah, so these are check all that apply over here and then make sure to put your narrative. And then these are all links and resources to help kind of guide your response. We're um, asking that agencies um, include more information about how they measure performance and what that looks like for them and how they use that to understand where they are and where they need to go um, to create a more equitable and just homelessness response system and program design. Um, oh, I, I see a question, Susan. That's OK, I'm sending an email to Karen. It has to do with the known benefits and known income lines on um, Presto. And there is or was an error in the APR. We addressed it last year, but apparently it persists in some of our APRs that were for projects that say ended last September. And that was the APR that was submitted. So I'm sending Karen. Hi, Karen. I'm sending you the email thread from last year and Sasha's response so that um, and Olivia's on it too, so that we can um, perhaps get that resolved because there is an error in three of our four projects and other people may have it. I don't know. I think it will just pertain to APRs that were run and sent in or you know run say in 2022 so that's it for me I can't hear you, Laura. Sorry, uh, my my computer is like too many screens are open. <laughs> um, so that's it for the presentation specifically. Um, but uh, feel free. I don't know if there's any um, questions in the chat that I missed, but feel free to come off of mute if you have any questions right now. I just want to um, do a shout out to my girl Goldie on the screen. 
Um, she is our foster cat, so if you're looking for a wonderful foster cat or a cat to adopt, let me know. Um, but she is also a great resource to ask questions to for the NOFOs, and she read it as well. So. Um, this is Lindy with Divis. If we have any specific questions, should we reach out to you first, Laura? Um, I think, you know, if you want to reach out to both um, Karen and um, us, then yeah, I mean, uh, I think we'll try and tackle it as much as we can. Um, so we're not having to like go back and forth as much. Thank you. And as the when it comes to appeals and things, um, so appeals or those ranking pieces to reach out to Karen um, and the home base team, um, we want to make sure to have a like some separation when it comes to like the ranking process and the appeals process, um, since we are also um, a COC funded agency. Um, although, yeah. Is this a time, Laura, that people can ask specific questions about projects they're thinking about? I know we have a lot of new folks on the call. Mm -hmm. um, and I um, am planning on also sending out a survey later today um, to see if um, if anyone's interested in applying as a subrecipient or being a contractor, maybe we could collect that information and then share it out with everyone so that they could kind of see maybe I could partner with this agency or, you know, um, yeah, see if we can like spur on a new project, a new lovely partnership for this funding competition. Questions? Did we get any in the chat? I'm trying to open it. Karen, did I miss anything important? There were no, you're not in the chat at least. Okay. I don't think so. I think you did a great job. You covered all the things. All the things. Okay. Hey, Laura, this is Grace. Hey, Grace. Hi, so um, of course we're new to the NOFO. Um, we know there's an emphasis on partnering with healthcare organizations and Morton would like um, to try to figure out wh what that means and um, what kind of partnership that would be. So, um, you know, we're open to having any discussions with anyone. Obviously, um, the NOFO in the past has really been about housing and case management and all of that. And so how does healthcare fit um, as a partnership within the NOFO? That's our question. I know it's a really quick turnaround time. So the conversation about that will have to happen really quickly. Yeah, I'm so glad that you're here. And I think um, so HUD um, has emphasized an increase in um, access to mainstream benefits, which we know that medical providers can support a lot of the um, documentation and process to get access to Medicaid and Medicare, and then also that ongoing care. So we have a lot of um, existing renewal programs who could do an expansion and add a healthcare partner as a part of the expansion process. Um, we could also do, um, you know, a new project application uh if anyone is interested in a, um in the budget line items there's a lot of so in that budget for the new projects which i think could be helpful i'll just like share my screen again really quickly it cites in this document what the eligible costs are under the coc program um which you will see here, like the section of the interim rule. 
and under supportive services, there are several um, areas that, you know, and that would be helpful or if that could apply to partnering um, with healthcare providers. So including any eligible costs under here, or even, you know, if it's a medical case manager, um, providing uh, life skills, a lot of CSAC community health care workers um, could fall under life skills as well, or case management. Um, so, you know, partnering under those are really helpful for the supportive services. If you're applying as a subrecipient, um, then it would be definitely like more of a collaborative application and um, to be aware that a subrecipient relationship generally means that you're also being monitored by the recipient annually. Um, and then there's also you can contract services as well. Um, medical providers can also apply for funding as long as they meet all of the eligibility requirements of an organization. Um, so there's lots of amazing ways to partner and if there are agencies that are also looking for that, um, please reach out to Grace. Hey, Laura, do you mind if I jump in for a second? Oh, Karen. I, I was just, you know, I think for everyone, including Grace, um, you know, I think like there's so many partnerships nationally that we see with healthcare. I mean, in some places, um, hospitals or healthcare providers are actually paying for housing, right? So when you're thinking of either something new or, how you're doing things like it can be utilized as a source of match for some things like we see that uh, in my experience health healthcare likes to pro uh, provide like temporary housing so if you're thinking of the joint component project like healthcare might be an opportunity to pay for kind of that short term crisis housing while someone moves into something like rapid rehousing so I just wanted to like note it can be beyond just regular service delivery um, and getting back to the NOFO, like there is like leveraging points. So, um, you know, maybe with Morton, they're not exactly <laughs> like part of the the package of services, but they could sign on as leveraging by providing healthcare services to people as part of the new project grant application. So um, lots of different ways. I encourage you to reach out to Laura um, to chat through those you can reach out to us at home base too but we like we really like to do things together so we're all on the same page so but lots of fun uh, po possibilities and opportunities and lots of examples nationally we can draw on great thank you two questions if you have time one i think the timeline obviously right now is very quick and focused on getting this application but is there an opportunity in preparation for next year, knowing this is an annual opportunity to workshop some of these ideas sort of after the fact? And then two, um, what is the reporting requirements that go along with the funding? And how do we know as a community that like the beds that were planned to happen based on this funding actually happened? I'm, I'm just curious what that looks like. Yeah, those are really good questions. Um, so the first question is like preparing for the next year because we do know that this is a tight timeline. Um, I definitely think that's something that we are very interested in doing is um, more in advanced capacity building for new agencies who are wanting to join in. Um, and so we can um, definitely do more uh, workshops around that as well. and not only for just CSE projects, but for other, um, you know, projects that are commonly funded um, through, you know, that funds homelessness services that are dedicated. Um, so even considering like ESG or because um, we follow a lot of the same requirements and then going to the reporting piece. Um, so each project has to submit um, a report to HUD called the Annual Performance Report, and every agency has to enter data following HUD HMIS data standards into the local HMIS database or a comparable 
database for victim um, service providers. And so we use Service Point um, by WellSky. And so uh, it makes it easy to pull that report and then you submit it in to a system called Sage. Uh, when it comes to the beds or units, uh, whatever you put in your application is what will also be entered into SAGE. And so it'll calculate a report called the bed unit utilization rate. And so we can see are all beds being filled? Is there, you know, to what extent are they over serving? A lot of projects tend to over serve as well. Um, and so uh, really following those HUD HMIS data standards is an, is an important part of this. And also there's a lot of compliance pieces, but it's all on the HUD exchange. And I feel like once you learn it, I mean, they rarely change it. And there might be like a few changes. So um, yeah. Very helpful and very interested in the capacity building conversations moving forward, recognizing that on the deadline is not the time to have that, you know, that focus, but would love to brainstorm with others who have more experience in this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, suggestions, needs? hopes and dreams. OK, if there's no any if there's not any other questions um, for now, we will go ahead and end um, the presentation. But please know that you can email us at any time at uh, nofo at housing solutions Tulsa dot org with any questions or um, please just reach out. We are definitely looking for new applicants always. Um, and so even if it's for a you know FY24, uh, we want to make sure to keep you in the loop for future funding opportunities. Um, yeah. Thank you all for spending your Friday um, attending this TA workshop and thank you for your patience with our technical difficulties. And thank you, Karen, for putting in all of those great resources um, and links. I really love the CSC ESG virtual binder. It's amazing. It's a really great resource to understand more about the continuum of care program. Actually, Laura, this is Susie from YST. I do have a question. Yes. Since the NOFA is, you have to go to grants.gov to get the NOFA, right? And, sorry, what was that? You have to go to grants.gov to get the NOFA. Um, you can uh, download the document from grants.gov, yes. Do we have to do any part of the application on grants.gov? No, you do not. So you'll submit your local application and then um, you will also submit the eSNAPS application. Um, and that's the one that will go to HUD. OK, I just wanted to clarify there's no application piece on grants.gov. Yeah, okay, no, thank, thank you. you. Well, I don't know if eSnaps is any better, but. Well, at least you don't have to do both. It's not. Yeah. It's, at least you don't have to do both. Okay, thank you. Good point. Okay, any, any other last minute questions? Okay, well, please reach out if you think of anything else in the middle of the night. We're always here for you. Um, otherwise, have a great Friday and a great weekend. Thank you all.